Hiroko free tier will come to an end at 28th of November. So we need to make a decision about our Postgres databases running on Heroku. At this point, we have few options like moving to a paid tier on Heroku, moving out to AWS or using a service provider like Railway. Now, depending on your situation, your choice may vary. There are many factors which will affect your decision, such as pricing, scalability, configuration options, future proofing, support and many more things. In this video, I will be using Railway. In my opinion, Railway is a service that has a sweet spot of all of these options, hence the choice. But enough said, hit the like button and now let's get started with the migration process. So first things first, before you start, you need to make sure that you have a Postgres command line tools installed on your machine. To verify that, we can open up our terminal and type psql dash dash version. We can also verify the pg dump and pg restore the same way, just like that. Those are the helper tools that we will be using to backup and restore our database for migration. In this step, if you see an output like command not found, then you need to make sure that you have set up your path variables correctly. You can do so by adding the bin folder under the PostgreSQL installation directory to your environment path. Since I'm on Windows, if I go to the environment variables and path, as you can see, I've added it like so. Now, let's examine the current situation. We have a Postgres database in Heroku, so let's connect it and see its contents. To do so, we head over to the settings on our Heroku dashboard and view credentials. Now, it is really important to keep those hidden. Anyone that has those credentials can access and alter your database. I'm showing you these just for demonstration. Anyway, to connect our database, we head back to our terminal and type psql. Then we add dash h followed by the host name, which is this URL. After that, we add the port by dash p and the port, which is 5432. Next, we add the user by dash capital U followed by our username. Then finally, we add the database name by dash D and copy this. Now, when we hit enter, it asks our passwords, which is this one, and now we are connected. At this point, if I were to list the tables, as you can see, we have three. It is essentially a database of cities and countries. And if I select cities, we got an encoding error, which is no big deal. We can resolve that by using the command set client encoding to UTF-8. The encoding is now set, and if I try it again, there we go. We have a bunch of data. Now, let's get to the migration and move all of this to Railway. To do it, we head over to the Railway's website. There, we start a new project and provision a PostgreSQL database. And just like that, it provisioned us a database, which is quite amazing because we are not even logged in yet. That said, it gives us a warning that this is a temporary project and will be deleted in a day, which is fine for this video, but in your case, you probably want to claim it. Anyways, now let's actually start the migration. To do it, we first need to have a backup of our Heroku database database. But before doing that, it is very important that you put your application in some sort of maintenance mode. Because if you have a write intensive application and you won't pause the reads, the migration can cause data loss. So keep that in mind. Now let's keep on going. To take a backup, I've opened up a command prompt window. If you are on Windows, this is a crucial step. Because if you use PowerShell instead, the migration process will not work. So once we go to the command prompt, let's quickly head over to the desktop so that we can find our backup file easier. To take a backup, we use the pgdump command. Then we follow that by passing the h flag and our host URL on Heroku. Next, we pass the d flag and our database name. And after that, we add the capital U flag for the username. Then we add the p followed by the port. This structure is essentially the same as how we connect to our Heroku database. However, this time we are using the pgdump command instead of psql. Also, we will add the capital W flag followed by capital F and lowercase t. The capital W will force us to enter our password and ft command command will set our backup file as tar, which is quite straightforward. Then we can finally add our output dump file like so. In this case, I name it latest.dump, but you can name it however you like. Now, we are ready to execute our command. So I hit enter and paste my Heroku database password. After that, we wait for it to complete. Once that's done, we are ready to restore our database on Railway. To do that, we will be using the pg restore command. We then add again the similar flags with the pg dump command. However, this time we will be using the Railway database credentials instead. To find them, we head over to the database and go to the connect section. And as you can see, the credentials are hidden. And again, do not share these with anyone. I'm just showing you because I will be deleting this database later on. Anyways, fast forward, I copy and paste those credentials to my terminal and we end up with a command structure like this. Notice that this time we don't use any sign to input our dump file. That said, now let's execute this command. And while this command is running, we can see some errors and that's actually fine. 
This is because of the Heroku role dumped within the backup file. This is likely to have no effect on the actual data, but if you want to prevent that, you can follow these steps. Following these steps will let you to use your existing Heroku credentials, except obviously the host. And if that's something that you want, keep that in mind. Now, as we can see that PG restore command is finished. Now, when we head over to the railway, we can see our data, which shows us that the database is successfully migrated. Essentially, that is how the migration process can be done at its core. However, depending on your configurations and preferences, the steps can change. Therefore, I'll leave some resources in the description so you can take a look at there as well. In any case, I hope you find this video somewhat useful. If so, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And until next time, take care.